This episode of Cool English was sponsored by the free Golden English app. Download apps, complete surveys, or watch ads during Golden English for completely free. Download the app with the link in the description, and use the code on screen to get 10 Golden English for free when you sign up. Welcome to episode 3 of Cool and Goes, the series with neat facts, life hacks, setbacks, and big racks. Joining me today is Duke Leo, also known as Monsieur Leo from Nation Guide Part 3. Let's get right into it. You can tow enemy vehicles in custom battles. It's a bit convoluted, but it is possible. First, the enemy needs to spawn on your team, then J out and spawn on the enemy team. Afterwards, when they enable their tow hook, you can bring them along wherever you please. Different shells have different effects on armor. For example, Heat FS punches a hole through the armor with splash damage around it, Hesh creates a big crack, and HE leaves a mark. On the top left corner of the test sail map, there's a cave with a small burning boat inside. On the Russian website, Lucky Icon Art, you can see all the icons guided and commissioned for the game. These include stuff like shells, modifications and awards. You can even find icons for unreleased features. Some examples are a camouflage modification and awards like Destroy by Ricochet and Destroy by Ramming and Survive. This means that there was going to be a ramming feature in the game at some point, but it seems like it was scrapped. The Yak-38 can take off from the test fly carrier without hovering. This only works in arcade though. The Staghouts on the British test flight map ram into and destroy some of the buildings. Speaking of test flight vehicles, they actually have collision models. The preview images of the rattles have spare tires on the back of the vehicles, but the in-game models don't. Water will completely stop all your momentum. The bridges on the German test flight map are destructible and will give you a target destroyed message when you destroy one. Also, while we're here, if you destroy the BF-110s on the test flight map, the escorting BF-109s will actually land on the airfield and eventually disappear. Moreover, if you make the escorted plane go off course, then the escort planes will follow it. The AMX 10RC is the only wheel tank capable of neutral traverse. And now, time for some terrain facts. Driving over ice will make cracking noises, and if you shoot the ice, it will leave a small crater. Mud and bricks also have a special noise when you drive over them. Restoring shells in cap points costs money. The cannon on the BMD-4 has a small burn mark on the side of it. This is because the secondary cannon burns off the paint. On the Campania map, the signs outside cafes have some texts. Here's a rough translation. On the German P-47D, you can clearly see why the American Air Force roundel was painted over. The 88mm flak cannons in Berlin are surprisingly detailed, and when you destroy them, they fall apart. There's a small chance that the Hano Hana radio broadcast will play on the speakers in Vietnam. How are you, G.I. Joe? It seems to me that most of you are poorly informed about the going of the war, to say nothing about a correct explanation of your presence over here. Nothing is more confused than to be ordered into a war to die. 
or to be maimed for life without the faintest idea of what's going on. If you press the open cockpit button on the HE-122A0, the opening sound still plays even though the plane doesn't have a cockpit hatch. If you look at the replay of the match on some maps, the cap zones will appear somewhere random. On Hartkun Forest, there's a speed limit sign next to the small town. Make sure to obey it! On the test drive map, you can find a small campsite away from the targets. You can even go inside the little castle. Inside, you'll find some firewood and a table with open food cans. Did you know you can ban loading screens? To do so, go to Options, then to Loading Screen Filter. This is only possible with a premium account though. On Advance to the Rhine, the main road has German newspapers and propaganda scattered around. This particular news board features Nazi newspapers like Der Stürmer, but also includes modern newspapers like Die Welt for some reason. In the Japan map, you can shoot down the doors of the houses and take a look inside. It's actually possible to fire a missile at yourself. The missiles on the Type 60 are so slow they can guide them towards your tank. It doesn't destroy your tank though, it just passes through you. The tanks in the test drive can't drown unless your tank is touching them. Planes with two pilots like the twin Mustang can still fly even if one of the pilots are dead. If you press escape while firing your machine guns or cannons, the firing sound will keep playing in slow motion. The trees in Finland have VP1999 along with the hardened arrow engraved on them. Whoever be NPR, we wish them the best. If you hover over the flag of a tank that has a different operating country, the game will tell you what the countries are. The US flag decal is actually historically accurate. It only has 48 stars instead of 50, since Alaska and Hawaii were not American states during World War II. The one you have to pay for does have 50 stars though. It also has a different shade of red for some reason. The bomb bay on the Votors don't actually have bombs on them. Corellia is the only map in the game to have square cap points. You can set up a keybind to mark a position on the map for your squad mates. Afterwards, when you mark the spot, you can then ping it for your teammates. This is quite a handy trick for marking enemies. For some reason, the greater than and less than symbols turn into square brackets in the game chat. If you know the reason why, let me know in the comments. Black smoke creates a shadow. It's possible to go over the barricades and ask if your tank is fast enough. This can be done on both team spawns. If you shoot the metal basket on the back of the ZOC-57, shell casings will appear. If you're in a custom battle where nobody's on the enemy's side, the scoreboard will only show your team. The back of the ASU-57 isn't modeled as armor and can be shot off, even by friendlies. It doesn't show up on the armor view either. 
Your crew disappear when you flip your tank. If you click on the minimap during a replay, a big version of the map will appear. Speaking of the minimap, if you go out of the map that was on Port Noir Rossisk, you'll see the air version of the map instead. Only for a brief moment though. Night battles are pretty cozy. You can hear crickets, birds, and all sorts of other animals. You know, if it wasn't for the cost of warfare going on, it could actually be somewhat relaxing. You can track the flares over cap points during night battles. They appear on your search radar as well. And one last bit of night battle trivia. If you can't see your crosshair because it's too dark, there's an option in the controls to change its color. You cannot enter the big hangar in fields in Normandy. Track marks can get filled with water. The Electo can almost be entirely submerged in water without drowning. You can see how many shells the first stage ammo storage contains in the hangar. This way you can see the optimal number of shells to bring into battle. The American tank commander voice calls APCR Hypershot. Load Hypershot! Some MI-24s have fans inside the cockpit. They even spin. Perfect to keep you cool during your field trip to Afghanistan. Some hand crank turrets turn slower when the battery is empty, even though they don't use a battery. The boxes in cargo port have a surprising amount of physics. Each box is an individual collision model and they collide with each other over the tank. Out of the current 47 Israeli vehicles, only 10 can be considered unique, all of which are tanks. The rest are either copy and paste or light variants of existing vehicles. You can turn on night vision in replays. The vehicle with the lowest PR with the color photo is a C13 T90 at 6.7. For comparison, the next Italian tanks with color photos are all at 9.0. On the topic of photos, the IPM1 and the Automatic are the only rank 7 tanks without colored pictures. The HE51A1 is the only plane to have a swastika. It is censored though. On vehicles where the crew are visible, the X-ray view shows clothing and facial features instead of the generic 3D model. And last but not least, Type 93s can be used as projectile weapons. And now, time for a new segment called Cartography, where we focus on a single map and its features. This episode will be looking at Surrex 13. This map is an abandoned military town from the 70s which features commie blocks, a cultural center, scientific sculptures and Soviet administrative buildings. It's based on the real-life city of Surrex in Trump's Oblast. To learn what's going on in this city, we need to take a look at some clues. There are speakers in the middle of the map which warn people about an incoming air raid. Take a listen. This might be why the city is abandoned. All the citizens are probably hiding in an air raid shelter. Across the map you can also hear some police chatter over a radio in a police car. Поступила информация, что из института средней 
промышленности выводят оборудование. Проверьте, не мародерство ли это? Сохраняйте действительность. Обо всем докладывайте. The dispatcher talks about a lost tourist, a military blockade and looters stealing weapons. It's clear that something is going on, but it's not directly explained. In one of the apartments, you can hear a radio playing news and some music. Письмо от нашей юной радиослушательницы Светлана Исенко. Она передает привет своей бабушке из поселка Чесноковка, Северского района. Желает ей здоровья и просит поставить для нее какую-нибудь хорошую композицию. Ну что ж, посвящаем следующую композицию Светиной бабушке. Московское время. Часов. Передаем последние известия. Вчера правительство СССР в очередной раз выразило свой решительный протест в связи с продолжающимися провокациями и обострением обстановки на границе Северской области. Правительство Соединенных Штатов продолжает настаивать, что воинский контингент НАТО размещен неподалеку от границы для проведения учений и не несет угрозы ни одной из стран Варшавского договора. Однако до настоящего времени Соединенные Штаты никак не прокомментировали ситуацию со сбитым на прошлой неделе на территории СССР самолетом-разведчиком У-2. Мы продолжаем следить за развитием событий. So all these clues combined leads me to believe that there is an invasion by NATO forces. The city is under martial law and the citizens are hiding in an air raid shelter. Some looters are of course taking advantage of the situation and are stealing weapons from a nearby depot. In historical matchmaking, the NATO forces would be the invaders and the Soviets would be defending the town. So next time you queue up for Subvert 13, you can add some flavor to your match by role-playing as one of those factions. Enough with the lore though, let's take a look at some details. The insides of the comic blocks are pretty detailed. Looking through the windows you can see some room decorations, but the inside tells a different story. The walls have collapsed, the entire building is falling apart. It gives me some real Metro 2032 vibes, honestly. Another neat little fact about these blocks is that they all have a unique name. They are labeled with small signs, with some examples are the Soviet Street, the 5th Micro District, the Lenin Prospect and the Gagarinas Prospect. Prospect is a Russian name for a street in an urban area if you didn't know, kinda like Boulevard. Nighttime in this map is quite beautiful, with street lights and neon signs scattered around the map. Another little fun fact is that the neon lights glow when you turn on night vision. Severx 13 also has many scientific sculptures. Take a look. In the big park area, you can find a palace of culture. These were cultural clubs built by the Eastern Bloc during the Cold War. Next to it, you can find posters of theater shows that played in there, along with a list of cast. Some titles include Experimental Theater, Pantomime, and in the name of the revolution. The inside of the palace is also surprisingly detailed with broken glass, posters and chairs. The other side of the map, however, is completely different. Instead of bustling streets and commie blocks, the town around point A is more agricultural. There are farms, beehives and a church. The church, however, isn't in the best condition. There's also a water tower, a taxi stand and a news board. Some houses have trucks, while some have ladas, both of which have a detailed interior. There's a whole bunch of other stuff I could mention too, but for time's sake, it'll have to be a slideshow. So, enjoy!
and that about covers it. Thank you all for watching. Special thanks to these very cool fellows for helping out with the video. If you have any other unknown facts that weren't mentioned, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.